Hello, I'm Tiffany Watson, Director of the Edward J. Lewis II Lawyers in the Classroom Program. Thank you for joining us for the Lawyers in the Classroom Program interview series. Today, we'll hear from attorney Andrew Chamberlain about his volunteer experience and why he volunteers with the Lawyers in the Classroom Program. Welcome, Andrew. Thanks so much for having me, Tiffany. Uh, I think there's really uh, two reasons for that. The first one was uh, I'm newer to Chicago, both uh, in terms of living here and practicing here. So I thought it'd be a really great way to, you know, sort of start integrating myself into the not only the legal community, but also the community at large and getting more involved there. Um, and uh, so far, that's turned out to be true. And second, um, when I was in school, I really, really enjoyed it when attorneys or other professionals would come in and give their, you know, uh, take on what they do for a living and kind of expand on uh, what we happen to be learning in uh, our classrooms. And so I thought it would be a great opportunity for that. Um, it was the lesson uh, called, Is All Speech Free? And, you know, ultimately it was discussing not only the free speech rights that we have, but also the ways in which the government can limit those rights and, um, you know, sort of uh, in certain circumstances, uh, direct speech or uh, prevent it from happening at all. Um, and I thought that was important for a couple of reasons. First, the First Amendment is just very topical these days. Uh, you know, in the news, you're hearing about you know, right to speech, right to protest, right to assemble all of these, you know, things that I guess go on in our uh, political uh, uh, system here. Um, and in addition to that, you know, the First Amendment is something that the school age kids can really take advantage of. You know, it's something that they can use, obviously being on the younger end, the voting rights isn't quite, um, or, you know, uh, concerning them quite yet. Um, and, you know, unless they get involved in the legal system, a lot of the due process rights and, you know, right to trial and Sixth Amendment, things like that, I'm really going to apply. So I think it's something that uh, a middle school age kid could um, really learn about their own rights. Hey, I think sort of not only what we call the black letter law or the horn book law of what type of limits the government can place on speech, like time, place, and manner limits or, you know, national security or something like that. But I think what the lesson did a really good job of is sort of helping to tease out what that looks like in practice by going through the hypotheticals. Uh, they were discussed, I believe it was a candy store hypothetical where, you know, it gave them options, you know, is, is it protected by the First Amendment to go protest in the middle of the street during rush hour? Is it protected by the First Amendment to go, uh, you know, to a town hall and say, I don't like this rule, things like that. Just kind of going down one by one um, sort of teasing out how these sort of black letter law concepts will apply uh, to specific factual scenarios. And it was pretty, I guess, expected that, you know, most of the things we kind of as a group came to conclude would be uh, limitable by the government. It was under the time, place, and manner restrictions sure. uh, rather than something like fighting words or clear and present danger through threats, things like that, yeah. um, which, you know, kind of led to, as a practical matter, it, I think that's generally the case that that's uh, most of the uh, First Amendment challenges that it uphold the government's ability to limit speech are, you know, based on time, place, and manner. Well, I would say, in addition to what I'd already covered, I, I would say it really helps you get back to basics. You know, when you're practicing law, and most of us develop a specialty or a sub sub specialty, and you're really only concerned with a pretty narrow slice of the legal system. Um, you know, even assuming you practice law in a traditional sense or traditional role as an attorney, it, it really gets you focused on one or two areas. And, um, you know, doing this and talking about, for example, the First Amendment or the right to vote, things like that, you know, it brings you back to basics. It's like, oh, yeah, this is why I went to law school in the first place. You know, um, it, you st sort of get out of your uh, sort of maybe your comfort zone and what you're used to talking about in your daily life and gives you a wider scale picture of how the legal system, uh, you know, impacts the country as a whole. You know, I really liked answering the, I mean, answering the questions from the kids sort of before and after the lesson, we had a little bit of free time and just letting them know, hey, this is what lawyers do. And Adam, my partner, was explaining what he does and what I do and sort of sharing our experiences, uh, 
um, and getting to interact and get to know the kids a little bit uh, was was very enjoyable uh, part of the experience as much as you know playing law professor was as well. So. <laughs> Thank you so much, Andrew, for sharing your thoughts and experiences. We really do appreciate you being a part of the Lawyers in the Classroom program. To learn more about the Lawyers in the Classroom program, please go to www chicagobar.org slash chicagobar slash LIC. Thank you so much.